One of the newer products in the holiday lighting industry is the four wire pixel with redundant data. But what is this redundant data all about? How does it work? And is it worth the extra few cents per pixel to buy it? So four wire pixels with redundant data, how do they work? And what makes them different to our traditional three wire WS2811 pixels that we've used for the last few years? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to take a look at how our traditional three wire pixels work and where their vulnerabilities are. Now, if we take a look at the makeup of a traditional three wire pixel, we can see that the three wires coming in are power uh, in red, we've got data in yellow and ground in black. Now the power comes in through the red cable, goes around the PCB and comes straight out again to the next pixel. The same with ground, but the data flows into the IC where it's processed. The data that's going to be used by the LED in that pixel is stripped off the front of the data string and the remainder of the data string is then sent out from the pixel to the next one in the chain. So if we get a small chain of pixels and hook them up, we then get power coming in, round the PCB, out to the next one and so on. Data comes into the first chip, so through the first pixel, out to the next one and so on. Now this can be demonstrated if you get a meter, you can measure the continuity from the start of your string to the end of your string on both the power and the ground and you'll see that you've got no resistance because there's continuity all the way through. The data line, you won't get continuity because it only travels from the controller to the first pixel and then the first to the second, second to the third. It is not a continuous line. Now our problem with these pixels comes if one of them dies. If the chip dies, then that's the end of the game from there onwards. So your data is coming in to the first pixel here. It runs across to the second one. And because this one has died, it is not going to pass data on to the last pixel and subsequent, any subsequent pixels that we've got in the string. So you'll see your data runs good up to a point and then nothing after that. And we can demonstrate that using some real pixels. So I've got a, a small collection of three wire pixels here. And if I plug them into this controller, there we go, we can see that they're busy doing a color wash. Now, if I replicate the failure of a pixel by chopping this data cable here, there we go, we'll just break that out. There we so the middle wire here is our data. And if I chop that to replicate the end of a pixel, we can see that the first ones in the chain are still moving and the ones beyond the break have frozen. And that's because there is no data getting through to them. So that's it, we've killed, we've killed the link there and that's replicated the failure of this pixel so nothing passes further down the chain. And if I plug them back in, there you go, only up to the dead or the, the cut in the line do the pixels work. Four wire pixels aim to get around this. The power and the ground still loop round on the PCB just as they did before. 
but now also on the PCB, we take out or we break out the data line coming in as the primary and that is looped round bypassing the pixel IC and comes out of the end as a backup signal. So the raw data coming in as primary not only goes into the IC but it also loops round and comes back out as a backup channel. Therefore, if this IC dies, you wouldn't get an output on the primary anymore, but you would still have this feed that's coming in from the pixel before to act on as a backup. Now, once again, if we've got a few of them in a line here, we can hook them all up and we've just got our power data and ground coming in from our controller. Our controller is exactly the same as we use for the three wire pixels. It just doesn't have a resilient data or a backup data up from the controller to the first pixel. From the first pixel onwards, it's generated. So the, the pixel data coming in from the controller not, goes, not only goes into this first IC, but it also comes round and comes out of the first pixel as a backup channel as well. And from there on, we have backup data available. Now, if something goes wrong, if our middle pixel dies again, the IC dies, then our data, our primary data, is still arriving at the module here, and it's coming round and it's coming out as a backup. So this backup signal here is good because it's the same as the primary data coming in. This chip is dead, so it's not producing a primary data out anymore. And so there's nothing here. There's no primary data coming out of this chip. So this next chip along the line is powered up. It can see that there is no data coming in on the primary line. And so it will fall back to this secondary line. It knows that the secondary line is coming from the pixel before the dead one. And therefore, it knows that it's got to strip out the data that should have been used by this one. It can use the next set of pixel data in the line. And then it can pass the data on. So it will restore the primary line going forwards. Now you'll notice that we don't have a secondary or a backup data line at this point because the backup data line would have been generated by this pixel which has now died. So we haven't got a backup line at this point. But from the next pixel along, which just like the one, the first pixel in the chain, it will be regenerated from the next pixel along and then you're good to go again with both primary and secondary backup data, um, both primary and secondary data, or primary and backup data. Now the only gotcha here is that if two pixels, one after the other, die. If they both, if two of them go one after the other, then you've lost your primary and you've lost your backup or your resilient data. Your first one goes, your next pixel along is relying on the backup. If the backup one goes as well, then there's nothing to send data further on. So it's not foolproof, but it is a get out of jail free card. If you've got a prop high up on the roof and one pixel dies, as Sod's Law says, it's going to be one up high, one in an awkward place that's difficult to get to. If that goes with traditional three wire pixels, then you've got to get up there and fix it because it's going to look bad. With four wire pixels, yes, it's going to need fixing. You're going to have to swap the pixel out, but it will probably wait till the end of the season. So you won't have to climb up there in the snow, the rain, the hail. You know, it's going to be bad weather up high it's just one of those things. So a four wire pixel, yes, it'll get you out of a pickle 
and it will keep your show running and you'll only lose one. Chances are you might notice because we all have a bit of OCD on our shows, don't we? But the general public won't. So you're good till the end of the season. So let's have a quick demo. As we did with the three wires, I've got some fours here. Here I've got a little batch of fours and we'll demonstrate the failure. There we go. So there's our pixels plugged in and they're running and these are our four wire ones. So let's, I'll go near the start of the string so I don't mess the string up too much for, uh, for later use. So let's have a quick look. So data one, data one is the left hand to me here, uh, wire. So I'm gonna pull data, peel data one out. There we go. Let's peel that out. And if I chop that, there we go. There was a flicker, as you probably noticed. Data one is dead, but the pixels are still working because it's working on the resilient feed. If I move on to the next one, Data one will be being regenerated. Let me have a quick look at the, the pixel here. And data two is this one over here. So let's peel that out. There we go. So this will be data two. There we go. So we've demonstrated the failure now of this prop properly and it has now died. But you saw, first of all, that data one's loss didn't make any difference. So the pixels kept working despite the fact that I had chopped out the, uh, the line. So there we go. There's a quick introduction to the resilient side of, data pic of uh, the four wire pixels and how they would be useful to you. Uh, during your show and how they can get you around in the need for immediate changes. It's not going to get you around problems with uh, changing at the end of the season, but it would get you out of the immediate issue. Now there is a byproduct to 12 to these uh, four wire pixels, and that is they are native 12 volt. So what I mean by that is on our traditional three wire pixels, the WS2811IC and the LED are both five volt devices. And to get from our 12 volts that we're putting in down to five volts, you would either have a bank of resistors on the back or a voltage regulator, dependent on the brand, the model of the pixel. Both of these lower the voltage from 12 to 5 by emitting heat. They convert the, the power to heat, basically, and, and so they're not overly efficient. I mean, they're not bad these days, but they're not hugely efficient. Now, if I hook up this string of 100 resistor pixels, you'll see what I mean. So let's get these going. There they go. And I'm just going to tap the, I'm going to take the fuse out for a second on this uh, ball grip board and just use the contacts there to hook up my ammeter. There we go. So let's hook her up and then we'll see how many amps are being pulled by this string of pixels. And we can see that 100% white, they're pulling around 2.54, 2.55 amps of power for the 100 pixels. And that equates to about 0.31 watts per pixel. If I now take these away and replace them with a set of four wire pixels, So with our four wire pixels plugged in, 
A, they look brighter, and B, they're only pulling about 1.59 amps, again for 100 pixels. That equates to around 0.19 watts per pixel. So that's about a 30% improvement on the power efficiency over a 12 volt resistor. And somehow, when I did some testing earlier, we, I tested a few 5 volt pixels as well, and they gave me a reading of about 0.28 watts per pixel. So somehow these are even more efficient than a 5 volt pixel, which has no resistors or regulators on it. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they're doing it. Um, I did actually phone a friend to ask for their advice as well, and they did some testing on the ones they've got and came back with the same results. So these are the most efficient pixels out there at the moment, and you get the resilience as well. Uh, I think in conclusion, it's worth the extra few cents to, to run 12 volts, because I hate five volts for the simple reason is you've got to power inject quite so frequently. Uh, and, and I hate that. Um, I haven't got time for faffing about all of that. 12 volt pixels, with the redundancy and better efficiency, I think it's a no brainer. So there you go. There's a bit of knowledge this week on four wire pixels and why I think they're, they're good and the way ahead. So thanks for watching. I hope to be re releasing videos on a far more frequent basis now that uh, I've had to sadly drop my retail store, but it means it's freed up time for this side of things. If there's topics you'd like me to cover in the future, then please do drop a note below. Any thoughts or comments, stick them down below. Uh, and I do read most of them. So uh, yeah, keep me posted. You may also have noticed at the beginning that it says the video is sponsored and this video isn't properly sponsored. I have been sent these four wire pixels and the ball grip controller and I don't have to return either. So thank you to Build A Light Show for the pixels and to I like that for sending me the Baldrick for review. There will be a new review of the Baldrick coming out fairly soon. I did one when it was first launched, but there've been quite a few revisions to the firmware since then, and it's got a lot more functionality than it did right at the beginning. So I'm gonna do a repeat of the Baldrick review in a week or two. Anyway, Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.